We'll start by looking at some of the basic features of Maxim DL5 and how you would use it to display your images and do a little bit of processing. The first thing to do is open an image, go to File, Open, and in this case I've got some images that have already been combined, they haven't been processed very much, just uh, stacked, which we'll look at a little later on how to do that, but for the purposes of aesthetics we'll get a picture that looks fairly pretty to begin with. And here we've got an image of the Whirlpool Galaxy. And you notice I zoomed out to 25% to get the entire image to fit on the screen so that we can get a better look at the whole thing. If we want to zoom in and get a closer look, simply a matter of plus minus to zero in on different parts of the image. And one of the most important things in Maxim DL is the screen stretch. It's the little icon that looks like a mountain range. Click on that and that is telling the program how to display the image. There's two markers. The red one is your black point indicator. The green one is the white point indicator. And the way these work, everything to the left of the red triangle is displayed as pure black. Everything to the right of the green triangle is displayed as pure white. So if you bring the green triangle to the left, the image will start to brighten up. And that ex overexposes the core of the galaxy, so you might want to bring that back down to where you can see this. To make the background of the image lighter or darker, you adjust the red slider, and we can bring that back and lighten up the background. We can darken the background, but what you don't ever want to do, and this is very important, is move the red slider past the toe of this histogram curve, the White Mountains, because that clips the data to the left of that. In this case, this is just screen stretch, so it's not affecting the data permanently, but it's a good habit to get into because if you apply a permanent stretch, which you may do at some point, then you don't want to lose any of that data. That's what you've taken long exposures for, is to get as much data as possible, and you don't want to clip it by, by darkening the background too much. You can see that the faint areas of the galaxy have disappeared if we move that too far. And so that's the basic setup for opening and displaying an image. Now that we've got our Whirlpool Galaxy image open, let's look at some of the basic processing techniques that you would use in Maxim DL. One really nice one is called stretching the image. So if you go to process and select stretch, stretch window opens, you've got some options here. One of the best for images, especially something of a galaxy like this where you have a very bright core and very faint outer details or a globular cluster which has the same sort of properties of very bright and very faint components, you want to do a log stretch and that stretches the histogram, the brightness data of the image logarithmically and it compresses the bright detail and the faint detail into a narrower range so that the computer screen can display them both at once. Best method usually is to select log, select max pixel, that'll compress the entire data range, and output range should be set at 16-bit. You're putting in a 16-bit image, you want to get out a 16-bit image. Hit OK, and things will go horribly, horribly wrong for just a few seconds because we need to adjust our screen stretch. So go up to the histogram here and you can see that it's compressed the histogram all the way over to the right side. And if we bring the black point slider over, suddenly the galaxy reappears. And we'll zoom in with the magnifying glass on the histogram. And we'll bring the red point slider, black point slider, excuse me, right up to the toe of the curve. And bring up our white point slider. Let me back this off just a little bit. But now you can see the bright detail in the core and the faint detail, these faint loops of dust and gas being pulled off this companion galaxy much more clearly than you could with the original stretch. Next we'll look at a feature called digital development, which is a pretty powerful processing routine that brings out a lot of details, especially in galaxies, works very, very well. What it does is compresses the brightness range, similar to what the stretch uh, did, the log stretch did, uh, but at the same time it tends to sharpen up the image slightly and does a pretty good job of, of retaining detail in the, in the brightest areas of the image. For example, the cores of these galaxies 
are a little overexposed, or at least they're a little too bright the way we've got it displayed right now. Technically they're not overexposed because if we open up the screen stretch and bring it down, you can see the detail in the core there, but then we start to lose the faint detail in the outer arms of the galaxy. So let's bring that back up and look at how to do digital development. You go to filter and select digital development. It'll bring up a window. Normally FFT low pass is the best type for filter type. And FFT hardness, you normally want to leave mild. You might even lower this number to make it less mild. It depends on the results of the image. If the image looks like it's too sharp, too over sharpened, back this number off. Then the DDP parameters are the important part. You definitely don't want to do auto, that usually never works. So uncheck auto from the background. And the easiest thing here is just to back off a few thousand counts. So right here we've got 61,000 counts. I'm going to back it off to maybe 55,000. That'll keep the background from being too dark. And then we'll turn off auto on mid-levels and select mouse. And you want to select from the image what you want the mid-levels to be. And usually something moderately bright like a spiral arm. The brightest part of a spiral arm is perfect. So I'll just select this region of the spiral arm for our mid-level and hit OK and it'll process the image. And when all is said and done, we've ended up with this fairly horrid looking image of the Whirlpool Galaxy. But fear not, once again, screen stretch comes to our rescue. And we want to back off the red point slider, black point slider, I mean. And the green slider, the white point slider, we'll back that off. And tweak this just a little bit. Zoom in, maybe brighten this up a touch. And to compare before and after, we'll zoom in on the image and center on the galaxy. And you can see we've got quite a bit of detail in the core regions. And if we do a before and after, do undo and redo, you see a pretty considerable difference in the detail that's visible in the cores of the galaxies. And it's also sharpened the galaxy considerably. We have much tighter stars and just everything looks a little contrast here. And that is the result of DDP. We're going to look at how to stack images in Maxim DL5. First you want to open the images. Go to File, Open. In this case let's use some of these M16 images. We'll pick three images of the Eagle Nebula. Open these. And as usual they're tiled across the top to where you can see them. If you want to get a better view you can zoom out to see the entire image. As usual you can open your screen stretch and adjust this to display it however you want, but none of this really matters because it's going to ignore all that when you stretch or when you stack the images rather. And you can just stretch the final image. But that shows you what we're working with here. And to stack, you go to Process, Stack, and Add Images. Select the images you want to use and hit OK. You have options like Auto Calibrate and Auto Color Convert. If you're shooting with a one-shot color camera, the Auto Color Convert is a very handy feature. It'll color convert each image as it's stacking them, so you don't have to go through and do that individually beforehand. That's a nice new feature. Also, you have the option of auto calibrating. The images that we're using here have already been calibrated with darks and flats, but if we hadn't done that, you can auto calibrate before you stack. Under quality, if you select one of these criteria, the program will go through and analyze the image based on whichever criteria you pick, such as the size of the star, the roundness of the star, and reject images that fall below the threshold. In this case, we're going to leave these blank because we just want to use the three images we've got and we're not worried about the quality of them right at the moment. Under Align, we want to select Auto Star Matching. This will go through and find all the stars in each of the images and stack the images based on the pos positions of the stars, rather. And that gives you a very good alignment. It'll rotate, scale, do whatever it needs to to the image in order to get a perfect alignment. Color, right now we're just doing a monochrome image, so there's no need to select any of the color settings. We'll look at that in a minute. And combine. Median combine is normally the best method to use for a small number of images. It gives the cleanest results. So you can choose that. 
and the other default settings are fine and when you click go it'll stack the images together. And through the wonders of computers we've skipped the time it actually takes this computer to crunch through uh, 311 megapixel images and we now have a stacked image. We can close the stack window and if we zoom out we've got our final image here and again you can open the screen stretch and take a look at your picture. If you zoom in and analyze one picture versus the other just looking at them you can tell that there's less noise the more images you stack and that's the secret uh, behind good images is stacking as many as possible in order to reduce the noise. Another nice new feature of Maxim DL5 is the ability to stack color images if you've shot with a monochrome camera with red, green, and blue filters. Uh, they've very much simplified the process of creating a color image now. Let's open the pictures we want to use. Go to File, Open, and we've got some images of the Cocoon Nebula. We've got three through a blue filter, three through a green filter, three through a red filter, and we'll select those and open the images and those will tile across the top as usual. Zoom out a little bit to see what we're looking at. Zoom out on one of the red ones where we can actually see something since the nebula is primarily red. Open the screen stretch window. You don't need to do this before you actually stack because the screen stretch is completely ignored. I'm just doing this to show you the image we're going to play with. Zoom in a little bit you can see the image is a little grainy because it's just a single exposure so we're going to combine exposures to reduce the noise and we're also going to create a color image with the different data we've got here. So go to process and select stack. Go to add images. Select the images you want to use and hit OK. And now if we go to color and deselect luminance because there's no luminance frame here. We just have red, green, and blue. You can change the balance of the red, green, and blue if you choose to. In this case the exposures were taken such that they should already be balanced 1, 1, 1. But if you knew your camera was more sensitive in the red than it was in the blue, you might increase the blue to balance out the color. Once you've got that set, you go to Combine, and we're going to do a Median Combine, so it's going to Median Combine all the reds, all the greens, all the blues, it'll do this all automatically. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And when you click Go, the magic will start to happen. Now that the images have been stacked, we have a color image. Let's zoom out and take a look at that one. Zoom in a little bit. Go to our Screen Stretch. And you can tell it's a color image, but you can also tell that it's a little too red. And this is simple to fix in color balance. So go up to color, select color balance, and simply select auto background levels. Hit OK. And magically we have a beautiful picture of the Cocoon Nebula. And lastly, the art of saving images in Maxim DL. Not as easy as it is in some other programs, and that's not a fault, it's just a matter of the features that you have and the control that you have over an image. But you do have to know sort of the nuances of being able to save an image so that you get the correct output when you take it to another program such as Photoshop. So if I want to save this image of M51, we can go to File, Save As, and we're going to save it as a TIFF image. FITS is what MaximDL can read and how it will save your images, and that's the best way to save images to use in MaximDL. But if you want to take your program, excuse me, take your image to another program, such as Photoshop, you'll want to save it as something else like a TIFF. So we select from the Save as Type menu, we select TIFF Images, and we'll give this the clever name of M51LRGB2, so as not to write over the one that's already there. 
Now we want size format to be 16-bit, it's the best way to go, uncompressed, and the screen stretch you want to turn off auto and turn on manual. Auto stretch almost never works. And what you want to do here, you see the stretch window again. This is the same window we used for log scaling earlier. But what we want to do now is select linear only and screen stretch. And that means the image will now be saved exactly as it appears on the screen, which is why it's very important that you have set the screen stretch exactly the way you want to save the image. And you don't want to clip any of the data by moving the red black point slider past the toe of the histogram. That's why that's so important, because you'll lose that data when you export to another program. But we like the way it looks on the screen now, so we hit OK, hit Save, and we've got ourselves a lovely image of M51 that we can take into Photoshop.